Good morning everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about online teaching and in particular uh, music. Okay, so I'm going to cover a little bit about classroom teaching, uh, school teaching as well as instrumental teaching. Um, I've got some tips for you, um, how to teach better online, how to um, learn better online as well I suppose. Um, so yeah, without any further ado, let's crack on. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is patience. Um, this probably goes without saying, um, this year, well last year, 2020, um, we've had to make a lot of changes very quickly, um, sometimes with very little preparation, and uh, yeah, so you have to be patient. Um, now what I mean by that is not just waiting for somebody to play something right, but it's also technology-wise. Um, if there's a delay with your Zoom connection or Teams connection or whatever you're using, um, it's really easy to get frustrated. I find this myself sometimes. If I'm teaching a student and they're like, oh, I can't hear you, you're frozen, or there's a delay or whatever, it's really easy to get built up and frustrated, and then you think, oh, forget it, we'll just cancel. Um, whereas actually, it still can work, it's absolutely fine. Um, you just have to have a little bit of patience, and um, you know, sometimes you have to wait a couple of seconds before responding so that you can let that delay um, you know, happen. Uh, sometimes there is no delay, sometimes it's great. Um, I, I have a choir over here as well, um, and we have a Zoom uh, rehearsal every Tuesday evening, and actually, there's no delay whatsoever with that one. Um, there's, it's really, really good connection. Um, sometimes when I'm teaching some students over in the UK, though, um, perhaps because of the distance, there is a bit of a delay, so that can cause a little bit of an issue. Um, however, it still can work if you just have a little bit of patience, just you know, breathe, <laughs> for one thing, um, because if you're getting frustrated, the student's probably getting frustrated as well, uh, which is never a good thing, okay? So um, that's my first tip, is patience, tip number one. Tip number two. Um, I mean, this kind of goes without saying, but trying to have a good internet connection. Um, if you're doing anything online, that requires uh, meets or uh, lessons or whatever, both ends have to have a good connection. Um, there's no good having, you know, the, 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 the slowest internet because especially if, you know, in my case, when, when there's a, you know, a, a distance between me and some of my students, um, the, it, it just won't work. It just won't work at all. And even with, the, the, you know, all the patients in the world, a slow connection is not going to, um, is not going to help. So try and upgrade your internet to a good connection, uh, or sorry, a good speed. Um, you know, I don't know what the, all the speeds are over here yet, but um, but yeah, so uh, that's my tip number two, good connection. Tip number three, um, making sure you have all your equipment set up and ready in wh where you want to teach. So um, I, always, I always set up here in front of, in front of this wall. Um, now I haven't got my piano over here with me yet, um, however, when that comes over, that's also going to go, go here as well behind me. Um, and it's really important that you have your teaching space. That is your zone. That is your teaching zone. Because when you're in that zone, you you work better, right? It's like when you're in a home office. Sorry, I had a few mic issues here. Basically, I was just saying if you're in school as well, you work better. You're like right in work mode. So it's really important to have that and, and few distractions around you as well. It's really important to have that zone where you can work, where you can teach, where you're not distracted by people. Um, or, or, or things around you, because if your student can see that you're being that you're distracted, or if you've got a lot of stuff going around. I mean, yes, I have this message on the wall behind me. However, that's quite nice to have. There's nothing too much there that's going to keep distracting students or whatever. Um, so, to have your space all set up nicely, um, it will really help you with your mental preparation as well as the you know physical equipment preparation as well. Um, tip number four. Now, this doesn't really apply to singing particularly, um, because demonstration with singing is a lot easier um, over Zoom because you just sing, right? Um, however, with um, piano, for example, 
I have taken to using, at the present moment, my phone. Um, however, I would also like to get one of those visualizers um, because I found that actually sometimes saying what you mean, okay, move your thumb onto middle C, move your, you know, um, your left hand down a, a couple of notes is okay. But sometimes if you've got particularly young students, um, they might not understand necessarily um, what you're actually what you actually mean. So what I what I found doing is um, connecting my phone, also joining my phone to the Zoom meeting to the Zoom lesson and using this as a separate camera and then I can hover over my piano or whatever it is I'm trying to show and I can actually show the student what it is I'm actually wanting them to achieve. Um, this has been really useful for me. Um, I only figured this out, I mean probably late to the game, but I only figured this out maybe a couple of months ago um, because I was trying to, silly really, I was trying to move my laptop round and hold my laptop whilst playing the piano, which of course was extremely difficult. So the the phone is a lot easier to maneuver. It's lighter. It's it's you know um, it's got a camera, etc. The only problem is, of course, if you're holding your phone in one hand, you can't play with both hands. So that's the only other thing. So I'm looking into getting some sort of um, headpiece, maybe that I could like like a like a miner's torch, like I could wear, um, so that I can look down instead of um, holding my phone. So that's the next step. But something that you can show the students what it is you want them to, to achieve okay that's that's the that's the main, the main point of this of this section um something that you want to show okay so the same with schools with school work um we have in my last school we had um visualizers where you know we would have um some work at the front some examples whatever and we would show the work on this visualizer and it would come up on the screen so all the students could see so it was really really useful for um showing student work but also teacher examples etc um, and I found this is really really good for instrumental lessons as well like I said not so much singing but certainly with piano um, perhaps with guitar as well setting up your your camera so that you can see the guitar separately um, cello whatever yeah um, so that's my what was that was that my fourth point fourth point I think that was yeah okay and my fifth point is to be clear with what you're saying, with what you're actually wanting your students to achieve, okay? Because sometimes you, re you don't realize just how much body language is picked up when you're teaching. If you're saying, right, let's play a little bit higher on the piano, um, you might inadvertently, if you're teaching face-to-face, -face, you might inadvertently move your hand or, or move your body in the direction when you say higher, indicating that's the direction of, of going higher. Obviously, that's more difficult with, with Zoom, um, online lessons, etc. So being really, really clear. So for example, rather than saying, right, just a little bit higher, um, you want to say something like, okay, this time we're going to move our hand just slightly to the right, up the piano, um, so that you're using the correct terminology, using the correct words, um, and making sure that your student really understands. Adult students, okay, yeah, you know, they obviously understand more. But having said that, some adults still might not know which way on the piano is up and which way is down, lower in pitch, higher in pitch. So um, it's really important to be clear and clearer than normal when you're doing um, Zoom lessons. If there's a delay again, yeah, you know, you're going to keep talking over yourself because you're trying to catch the delay or try and get, get behind the delay. So that might create a little bit of confusion. So um, just be nice and clear, really consistent with your terminology. Okay, so yeah, so point number one is patience. Point number two is having a good internet connection. Um, that's not really music specific. I mean, obviously that goes with any home, home working, you know. Um, point number three was making sure you have all your space, um, you know, your, your, your zone set up. Point number four was um, making sure that your, you can have your, your camera looking down at other... Um, at your piano, for example, demonstrations, and point number five is clarity. Um, and really, I mean, this was just a short video, but really, um, there are there, I could go on for hours about about talking and, and, and teaching online, but I think but whittle, whittling it down to these five points will really help at least kind of get you going again. Because I thought to myself when we went into lockdown the first time, I thought, oh, that's it, I'm not going to be able to teach any lessons, that's it. But you have to make you have to make do with what we've got, and as COVID is not going anywhere anytime soon, I don't think um, you have to make the best of what we have, and you have to adapt, be flexible, um, and that's 
you know that's a really good thing with with, with us humans is we are very adaptable. So um, using our technology to our advantage and making sure that we're also clever with it and clever with ourselves and making sure that um, you know we don't just get lazy uh, is is the way forward with teaching music online and also with um, live streaming you know music for example playing music it's the same sort of the same thing the same rules apply um, make sure you have a good connection make sure you're patient um, yeah all right so if anybody has any questions or if anybody wants you know if you have any suggestions of what you might want me what you want me to talk about in the next video or the next couple of videos um, put them in the comments below and um, I will make some videos about that I'm hoping to do another reaction video soon um, as well as uh, another performance as well um, so yeah keep a look out for those make sure you subscribe hit the like button and um, also the little notification bell so that you know exactly when uh, when I've posted videos and I look forward to seeing you next time have a good rest of your weekend